and welcome back to the Affirmation Attic Podcast. My name is Pyle and today I wanted to do a rapid fire of spiritual reminders to help you feel better. I was just thinking about like, what do I need when I just feel like I'm stuck in my manifestation or I'm feeling unmotivated or uninspired? And I just have like a culmination of reminders slash lessons that are just sometimes really nice to be reminded of. So however you want to take it, whenever you want to listen to this, this might be something to listen to often just to help you boost up that spiritual juice and give you a little bit of inspo when you feel like you're a little bit off. So the first one is just a reminder that you have the possibility and the capability of shifting your energy from chasing to attracting all by allowing yourself to tap into that feminine energy of receiving. You are the receiver. You are allowed to receive and reminding yourself that it is just a mindset shift. It is just a simple switch of a button. Nothing looks different. Nothing is different except that instead of chasing, instead of you being the go-getter, you are actually the magnet. You are the magnetism and you are the attractor of what it is that you want. The next one is a reminder that searching creates more searching and you cannot have what you want while also wanting it. Let me repeat that. You cannot want something and have it at the same time. It is physically impossible. You cannot have a desire for something and also experience the 3D manifestation of it at the exact same time. So if you are overly in that wanting or searching mode, tap into that having mode. How does it feel? Close your eyes and just imagine your desire. Your brain does not know the difference between what's real versus imagined. So just remember, if you feel like you're really, really deeply wanting, you cannot have it in that same energy and do whatever it takes to shift yourself out of it. Another one is you cannot outsmart the universe and skip the work trust me, I have tried this. I have tried so hard to find loopholes, to skip the manifestation work, to skip the consistency. And I think one of the hardest lessons I learned was that that was a frequency of impatience. And that was a frequency very, very deeply rooted in ego. And there is some sort of work you will have to do, whether it's energetic, whether it's physical, whether it's a spiritual practice, there is some sort of work that you're going to have to put in. Um, But you don't have to not like the work. You can actually thoroughly love the work and working towards your manifestation is not a bad thing. So change the way you see it. The next one is your desires want you as bad as you want them. I feel like when I forget this, it feels like I am trying to manipulate and force my desires into my life. And when I just hear and remind myself that my desires also want me, I have these desires for a reason. They want me to. So it's not like it's a one-sided relationship. It is a very mutual relationship and reminding yourself that your desires want you. Key disclaimer, it is your true desire. So sometimes if you're very attached to a physical person or um, a physical kind of label that your desire is, dig a little bit deeper and think about what is the true desire that you want? What is the feeling behind that desire? If that's actually what you're chasing and that feeling is meant to be yours just as much as you want it to be yours, that feeling wants to come to you as well. The next one is there's no such thing as a mistake or a problem and everything has a neutral energy except the energy that we're assigning to it. So reminding yourself that if things aren't going your way, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be a lesson. It can be information. It doesn't have to mean anything. It can mean what you want it to mean. And this kind of ties into my next one, which is anything can be anything with intention. It's probably my biggest fundamental motto of life where it's like literally anything can be anything with intention. Me drinking water can mean that I am manifesting more money um, with the most proper form of intention setting and the truest, most genuine um, kind of intentions. Sorry to say intention so many times, but anything can really be anything with intention. Me wearing my jewelry can be me protecting my energy. That is what I mean. So realize that your inner intention, your inner, um, I'm trying to think of a different word besides intentions, but the way you are approaching something and the intention you have with it, like the thought and the hope that you have with it is powerful enough to make it mean anything and to actually shift the 3D. 
Next reminder is you are so much more supported than you realize. I used to not be one for really believing in angels or divine support and divine guidance. And um, I don't even know fully how much I still believe that because I'm not in that space yet. However, I do know I am so much more supported than I think. And I'm so much more supported than I know. Ancestors, other people, in whatever way, shape or form you want to interpret this, just reminding yourself that you are not alone. You are not doing this alone. You are so much more supported than you actually realize. And on those days where you feel lonely or you feel like you're doing it all by yourself um, or you feel helpless, just remember that you are supported and you're way more supported than you probably have ever actually understood. Um, the next one is it is totally okay to be misunderstood. I think this really applies to friendships and relationships, which we deal with a lot where it's sometimes we try so hard to prove to the world and to others who we are and that identity that we hold so dearly to ourselves. But one of the most helpful things is that not everyone is going to understand you and you are not meant for everybody. And maybe someone is completely misinterpreting you and has cut you out of their life or is not with you, but it's okay that they are misunderstanding you. Your job is not to be understood by everybody. I think that brought me a lot of peace in my relationships as I've gotten older. The next one is love is the only frequency that matters. I am such a lover girl. I am such a romance girl, but also realizing that that love and romance goes far beyond your romantic relationships. It goes into the work you do, the food you make, the way you talk to yourself, the way you show up at work, the way you show up in friendships, the way you make other people feel, the way in which you take care of your home. I think love is this frequency that is so deep and so potent and I really do believe all you need is love but not in the most like physical way that we think very very like the energy of love from your heart space I think is the most divine thing Um, and I think the opposite of it is fear and I think that can really crush a lot of the momentum we have and realizing like am I operating from fear right now or am I operating from love I think is a really powerful question to check in with yourself throughout your days. The next one is time is a man-made construct and realizing how much of our stress, anxiety, worry, remorse, guilt comes from time or as a result of time or as a derivative of time, like how much of your trauma, how much of your fears and anxieties, how much, how much of that is based either in the past or the future, how much of your issue lives in the now. How many of your problems live in the now and not the now in terms of like your outer world, but like now in this very moment, in this very moment where your attention is, how many of your problems are existing? None until you bring attention towards it. So realizing that time is a man-made construct and if you can kind of let go of some of the barriers and some of the restrictions we let time have on us, I think it is such a pathway to peace. And it's a really, really helpful way to just alleviate some of the pressure you might be putting on yourself right now. The next one is all of this, this life, this spiritual journey, manifestation, everything is so much more simple than we think. And we have a beautiful tendency as humans to overcomplicate, to make things harder, to overthink, to overanalyze, to make it have to be a bigger deal than it is. And everything is so much simpler from manifestation being what it is to your purpose of life, to how to show up in your relationships, to like your skincare routine, to the foods you should be eating, like Everything is so much more simple and is supposed to be more simple and is more simple. We just think simple equals easy and easy equals too good to be true. But actually, simplicity is so powerful. And let yourself thrive in simplicity. Um, I think it was a really big ego check for me to be okay with simplicity. Um, I thought complexity equaled luxury equaled success whereas now I'm kind of shifting into and this is personal maybe for you it still is that and that's not a bad thing but I think there is a lot more power um, and a lot more freedom in simplicity and I think there's a lot more truth in simplicity than we realize Um, and I think you can learn a lot from it 
The next one is you are worthy as you are and none of your life, none of your spiritual practice should be trying to prove anything to anybody, especially and really especially when it comes to your spiritual practice. You're not proving yourself to be worthy of your manifestation. You are already worthy. You're actually probably more so playing a mental game with yourself to remind yourself that you're worthy, which is half the reason we're doing that spiritual practice. Ultimately, you as you are in this very moment you are worthy you have been born worthy um you don't have to prove your worth your whole job is to remind yourself of your worth i think we forget our worth i think we diminish our worth and i think we downplay our worth and our potential and i think so much of this life and so much of our lessons and our purpose here is learning about how worthy we really are and reminding ourselves of our worth, not anybody else. I think we try and prove it externally, but I think it's actually about internally reminding yourself of it. And the last one, which is my favorite, is you truly, truly can have anything you want and you can manifest anything you want. It's just a matter of, is it actually what you want? And I know that is such an annoying question. However, I can't tell you how many things that I was manifesting that weren't actually a true desire of mine or I was holding on to a detail that wasn't a true desire of mine. There was something deeper that was actually my desire. You hear me say this a lot and I will never stop saying it. You really can have anything you want. Manifestation is so real. Manifestation is so potent. I have honestly to this point manifested every single desire of mine and I have more desires and I've been scared to admit them, but now that I am starting to be comfortable admitting what my true desires are, they're in process. I can feel them. I can see them. I'm getting all of like the pieces in place and I can feel it happening and you are here to manifest. You are a natural born manifester and your role here and your purpose is to manifest. Um, It just depends on how you interpret that. So just a reminder, you literally can have anything you want. So I hope this rapid fire reminders did help you feel better. Let me know if you want a part two. I'm sure I can come up with so many more, but I've had so much fun just expressing these. It made me feel better just talking about it. So I'm curious how it feels as you listen to these um, when you're in a time of needing that little spiritual boost. So I love you. Thank you for being here and I will see you next week. Bye.